Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. ELE 44 Analog Electronics 1 Bipolar Junction Transistors Device. We have completed video pack 2 which was uh, diode applications. We are now ready to take on video pack 3 which is for the topic um, Bipolar Junction Transistors. There should be a uh, corresponding slide with this video uh, on BJT device uh, set 1. You should be getting this from your course lecturer. My name is Wan Fazli Dahanim Abdullah. I'm from Faculty of Electric and Electric UITM. So the topics covered in BJT device set 1 in this particular slide is that first we will uh, have a look at the introduction, why transistors, and then we'll have a look at uh, construction and operation at the junctions. Um, after that, we'll have a look at transistor configurations and characteristics before we take these transistors and put it into an actual circuit, which is common base, common emitter, and common collector. And before we leave uh, the device uh, section, before we go to... Um, the set 2 of the uh, topic which is on DC biasing we'll do a recap on the input and output characteristics and limits of operation so for the introduction as usual uh, the introduction section is for you um, to have an overall feel on the significance of, the, of this topic and to make it easier for you to um, go on and read the text uh, later so first we'll have a look of about shifting from video pack 2 to video pack 3 which is uh, the topic from diodes uh, going on to transistors and then um, we'll have a look as well as why we need transistors uh, and amplifiers and before we leave the introduction uh, section before we actually go into the topic we'll be introduced to the PJT which is the bipolar junction transistor from diodes to transistors so the previous topic was on diodes. So generally diodes have only two terminals with one PN junction. Okay, two terminals with one PN junction with a voltage across it, uh, which is V device, and the current through it, which is I device. And we will now begin uh, to learn about semiconductor devices with three or more terminals and that is through the transistors. So why an extra terminal? So we have three here. Okay, this is generally for any kind of transistors. So a general application concept of having three terminal devices instead of just two is that a small voltage and or current applied at one terminal or a pair of terminals control a larger electric flow through its other two terminals. So if you have a two terminal device, you put this device into the circuit, but here you have like a control lead, okay, um, a control terminal uh, and um, based on the uh, electrical input that you put or you apply uh, at the input terminal, you can control um, electric flow through the other two pair, uh, the other uh, pair of terminals. So ELE 424 will cover two types of transistors, which is bipolar junction transistor and the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So we will refer to this as BJT and MOSFET. Just to emphasize um, what we mean here with some uh, illustration, uh, diode allows current flow in one direction. So what we had, what we mentioned just now about the two terminal device is actually the diode. Uh, so diode allows current flow in one direction based on the biasing applied across these two terminals. And once it turns on, it locks at VD, um, allowing uh, current to flow uh, through it. Uh, at ID. So, but transistors offer a control terminal that decides the flow between the other two terminals. So, we will be covering BJT and MOSFET. Okay. So, this will be how our handwritten symbols will look like. Um, uh, it so happen that in this um, configuration, we have the input as IB, and IB and VBE, once it turns on, uh, will determine the flow of IC. Okay, the same thing as MOSFET, if you turn it on with the VGS applied uh, gate source voltage, it will control ID. So transistors and amplifiers. Three terminal devices are useful, um, more useful than two terminal devices, because you have one input to one uh, an input to one terminal which decides the larger electrical current flow through its other two terminals. And this input can be in the form of current or voltage across the two terminals, as mentioned in the previous slide. So transistors are used in almost every electrical circuit you can imagine. For example, you find transistors in switching circuits, amplifier circuits, oscillator circuits, power supply circuits, digital logic ICs, and almost any circuit that uses small control signals to control larger currents. So you have amplifiers. 
Amplifiers are devices or systems that increase the voltage, current, or power level of an input signal. So this is just a simple um, illustration. You put in a, uh, a small uh, signal input through an amplifier system and you amplify either its voltage, current, or power level at the output. Control signal can also be used to cause the current in the third terminal to change from zero to a large value, thus acting like a switch. So, And this is the basis of a digital logic module here. You have um, either you put in low or high, and the output will determine based on how this um, will be. The output will be determined based on how the digital module logic module is designed using transistors. So, following the course of um, uh, of our program, I, uh, whether it's um, in the Faculty of Electrical Engineering or Faculty of Applied Sciences, um, this here will probably be covered under the topic of digital logic fundamentals and maybe integrated circuit design if you uh, choose the topic of microelectronics and for but for this analog electronics we will be looking at this amplifier system uh, which we will start with single stage amplifier in this uh, uh, course ELE 424 so in in ELE 424 we will cover BJT and MOSFET single stage amplifiers and BJT and MOSFETs are amplifying devices. Okay, the transistors and they are amplifying the de devices. And the major difference between these two families is that bipolar transistors require a biasing input or output current at their control leads, whereas uh, FETs or MOSFET require only a voltage, practically no current at its input. So we'll cover how to bias them and analyze their behavior when fed with an input signal. Okay, so we have a transistor. We will decide. Um, uh, we will design and analyze a biasing circuit for this transistor, and then we will fit it with an input, and we will look at how the output look like. Okay, so basically, this is the thing that we will be studying. Introducing bipolar junction transistor. So BJT has three terminals: emitter, base, and collector. If you have a um, hardware lab, this is how it would most probably look like in this kind of packaging um, EBC okay, emitter base and collector are three separately doped semiconductor reg regions resulting in 2 pn junctions in the middle between the emitter and base and base and collector and these three terminals you can apply voltages uh, to these regions through these terminals if it is individually packed like this okay BJTs may also exist in an um, integrated circuit so MOSFET is now undoubtedly the most widely used electronic device, especially in the design of integrated circuits. Okay, um, There are more MOSFETs in this world than there are BJTs. However, BJT remains a significant device that excels in certain applications and in demanding circuits, such as very high frequency and high speed circuits or high current drive. The BJT remains popular in discrete circuit design, assembled on printed circuit boards with other components, and I'm just including this just for our own um, knowledge. I've included some pretty pictures from the internet taken from uh, Shutterstock. So this, if you look at this, this is PCB yeah, and all these colorful uh, resistors and integrated circuit here. Okay, this B a BJT may exist in an integrated circuit among other components in an in in a, uh, in an integrated circuit that is in a pack so inside here there'll be several um, components uh, much smaller perhaps several resistors um, maybe hundreds of transistors we'll never know um, tens to hundreds of transistors and here you may have some uh, individually uh, packaged um, bipolar junction transistors so these are just pretty pictures that are included in the slides just so that you know that these are things that you can actually uh, see so in ELE 424 BJT course content we will first learn about the BJT as a device just the device itself and then we will learn about DC biasing of the BJT when it is used in an amplifier the BJT needs to be turned on in the right region of operation before it can amplify a signal okay so first we will see how to, to bias it first before uh, it is given any input signal. So lastly, we will analyze how BJTs behave when it has been biased through DC biasing and then fed with a small EC input signal. Okay, so this is the small signal analysis that we will cover. 
Later on, when you do ELE426, if you do ELE426, you will see the effect of um, having multi-stage uh, amplifiers. Okay, Transistor construction and operation. So we are now leaving the introduction side. Um, we will now uh, look at BJT construction and operation. Okay, we mentioned three terminals with two PN junctions. The BJT is a three-layer alternately doped semiconductor regions and has two PN junctions. So you have emitter, base, collector. Uh, emitter and collector are doped with donor uh, atoms, so it becomes N-type. And the region in the middle, which is the base, is doped with acceptor atoms, so it becomes P-type. And between the emitter and base is a PN junction, so you expect one depletion region here. And then between base and collector is another PN junction, so you expect another depletion region here. So there are two types of BJT. Because you can have NPN, you can also have PNP. Okay, which means that the emitter and collector are doped with acceptor atoms and the uh, base region is doped with donor uh, atoms. So, um, with, sorry, yes, with donor atoms, donor ions. So you have here between uh, P and N, one PN junction, and another between base and collector PN, another depletion region. Okay, so there, these two PN junctions separate these regions known as uh, base emitter junction, emitter base junction, EBOBE, base collector junction, uh, which is uh, CB junction. Bipolar junction transistor has three terminals. Uh, again, mention again and again, emitter, base and collector. And the symbols for each BJT, NPN and PNP are now given, which looks like this. Okay, this is how you draw them in circuits. You do not draw them looking like this. Okay, this is just to show the different regions of operation. But the symbols, you draw these symbols when you draw circuits, just like you draw the diode with a triangle and a line. Uh, you have here NPN and PNP, and it is separated by, uh, it is uh, differentiated by this arrow here. Okay, so for NPN, the arrow leaves base. Okay, and for PNP, the arrow goes into the base. Okay, as usual, when the screen becomes yellow, we need to go and do some revision before we can carry on because it means that the uh, next slides will rely on your understanding of these uh, concepts. Okay, we will look at PN junction. Yes, we've just seen this a few weeks ago, uh, but we will need to have a look at it again. So we, this was done in uh, our slides. PN junction. A P side with majority carrier of holes and an N side with the majority carriers of electrons. And in between the PN junction, okay, this is the PN junction, will be a depletion region. In the depletion region, there will be no carriers, just positively charged donor ions. Donor ions are positively charged, okay, because the electrons, the fifth electron has become freed. And um, acceptor uh, ions are negatively charged because. Um, except the ions are su supposed to be just three electrons, but they have had to accept a fourth electron. So we say that they are uh, negatively charged acceptor ions. But this donor and acceptor ions are not carriers, so they are not free to move. Uh, instead, they form a region here with no carriers between them, which is a collection of charges. One side positive charged and another side which is negatively charged which, which means internally in the depletion region there is an internal electric field um, which is usually denoted if it's uh, in class we would uh, write it with a curly E uh, written with a depletion um, uh, notation. So what causes carriers to move? Okay, i.e. current. Carriers itself is not current yet but when it moves it causes current. So one is drift Okay, which is movement caused by electric fields. Again, we covered this in um, semiconductor materials. Uh, drift, which is movement caused by uh, electric fields onto the carriers. So the electric fields makes the carriers move. And the direction of motion is that holes will move in the positive direction of electric field and electrons will move in the opposite direction of positive direction of electric field. And diffusion is another uh, reason that makes um, these carriers move and diffusion is the flow caused by concentration gradient meaning that if you have one side 
of high concentration and the other side of lower concentration uh, naturally uh, the carriers would want to move and the direction of motion is from high to low concentration okay so high concentration here we have high hole concentration low electron concentration and this side we have low hole concentration with high electron concentration so naturally if you look at this um, uh, situation holes from the p side would want to go to the n side because there are less holes here but what makes them stop from diffusing what makes them stop from diffusing is this internal electric field in the depletion region because although it may want to diffuse from p to n this internal electric field is uh, providing an opposite direction of um, uh, force to the uh, holes and opposing the direction of the diffusion current so it becomes an equilibrium uh, this situation with no applied bias means that this internal electric field can create the balance and it opposes the direction of diffusion current so there will be no current across the depletion region okay that's the first revision the second revision refers to uh, how do we allow current to flow across the depletion region. So we know that the depletion region ensures that there will be no uh, diffusion current, um, no current injected from the P side to the N side of holes and from the N side to the P side um, con create, con uh, created by electrons. Okay, so, uh, so if we want current to flow, we apply forward bias, which means that we apply the higher potential to the P side and a lower potential to the N side. Okay, and this would make the internal uh, depletion region electric field to become smaller and it will not be strong enough to oppose uh, the current flow so current will flow with forward bias okay but if we want to uh, uh, further oppose the um, uh, current flow we can increase the reverse bias and that would cause the electric field the internal electric field to become stronger uh, in opposing uh, the electric field and the depletion region uh, width to become wider okay so again uh, before we leave this revision slide <coughs> with forward bias this electric field will not be strong enough and the majority carrier from one side can flow to the other side to be uh, as we say to be injected to the other side okay so in this case holes from p to go to n and electrons from n to go to p okay um, and the internal electric field becomes um, smaller but with uh, reverse bias this internal electric field will become stronger now internal electric field is the direction of electric field from the positively charged donor ions to the negatively charged uh, acceptor ions okay so it will be in the direction from n to p so if you put a hole okay if a hole uh, enters the depletion region okay it would move uh, in the direction of um, uh, from positive to negative but if you put uh, uh, electron in this direction uh, the electron would move uh, in the opposite direction okay we are now done with the revision we will now go back to the topic of BJT Okay, transistor construction applied bias. We have seen this. We know that there are three terminals and there are two PN junctions and we need to bias them accordingly. So how do we apply the bias? Now, before that, the, let's have a look at the construction again. Um, the emitter layer, okay, whether it is PNP or NPN, is heavily doped. Okay, and the base um, and the collector are only lightly doped compared to the emitter the base width is made thin okay and there is a reason for that so for active operation of an amplifier um, emitter base junction is forward biased and the base collector junction is reverse biased okay so there are actually three regions of operation but i'm just picking up this uh, active region of operation first because that's where we want them um uh, amplifying device to play its role to be able to amplify Okay. So the strategy is to inject the majority carrier in the emitter into the base uh, with forward bias. Okay, So when you forward bias, the majority carrier, if it is emitter, now if it is NPN BJT, the majority carrier of electrons would be able to um, travel to the base. And if it is a PNP, it will be holes that will be allowed to travel to 
the base okay and it's called um, injection so once injected into the base once hold let's let's stick to PNP uh, uh, to, so that we are consistent throughout our explanation without flip-flopping between PNP and NPN but it's still the same okay now let's say we uh, apply forward bias to PNP okay, between the emitted base junction um, holes would be able to uh, cross this depletion region between the emitter and base and be injected into the base. Now, once injected into the base, the injector carriage will diffuse across the thin base, okay? Because suddenly, once with the forward bias, once you inject it at this end here, the concentration will be uh, high, but the other end of the base would be low. And because it is made thin, okay, the concentration gradient would be even steeper and the um, carries injected into the base, which is holes injected into the uh, n-type base, will diffuse across the, bait, uh, across the base to end up in the collector base depletion region. Now, once in the collector base depletion region, the internal electric field of the collector base depletion region is such that it is in the direction that it will sweep holes right into the collector region. Okay, if it is in uh, PNP, um, and, uh, configuration. So now let's let's have a, a, a bigger illustration, uh, and we will stick with the PNP uh, explanation. But you can have an uh, um, uh, an equal explanation with NPN as well, um, exchanging the holes with electrons. Okay, my work of art. So I have your emitter, base, and collector. Um, emitter is P type. Lots of holes, majority carries are holes, um, and so is the collector, but collector is lighter dope compared to emitter. And N base will have more electrons if it is in equilibrium. So now let's apply forward bias between emitter base and apply reverse bias to collector base, and let's see what happens. So when you forward bias, okay, there will be current injection. The strategy, okay, I'm just putting in the words from the previous slide into this illustration the strategy is to cause the majority carrier in electrons uh, in emitter sorry the majority carrier in emitter which is holes to be injected into the base with the applied forward bias okay so now holes will be injected from the base uh, from the emitter to the base okay now second once it is in the base Okay, diffusion in base, once holes is injected in base the concentration gradient in base causes holes to diffuse across base and end up in the collector base depletion region because this is thin and because of the concentration gradient here you have lots of holes suddenly coming in from the fault bias and here you don't have that many holes the holes will diffuse and it would find itself itself uh, the the um, holes will find themselves in this collector base depletion region but the collector base depletion region has an electric field which is in the right direction to just sweep the holes right into the collector and then later on to be collected by the whole circuit, the whole, whole complete circuit. Okay, so the internal electric field in the collector base depletion region causes the holes to enter the collector region and the reverse bias enhances the electric field. So because, uh, again, looking ba just looking back at this um, electric field, the internal electric field, the depletion region, and it plays a very important part. Between the emitter and base, because of the applied fault bias, this electric field is no longer able to oppose diffusion current. Okay? But the other PN junction, one allows injection, but the other PN junction, the direction of electric field will sweep holes that enter collector base depletion region because that's what we studied just now during the revision. The electric field will just uh, is in the direction of a positive um, hole. <laughs> it will cause the hole to move in its uh, positive direction and so um, it will sweep the holes that enter collector base depletion region having made through the base okay so transistor operation components of ie ib and ic ie ib ic so we have majority carriers of holes going from ie injected into base diffuses across base and swept into the collector Okay, so you have IE and you have IC, but you have also IB. Okay, because IB will also have its components either from the um, minority carrier um, 
uh, regions or as well as those that uh, escapes this uh, diffusing across the base ending up into the collector region. So the majority carries from emitter entering base will enter C to become IC and the rest becomes IB at the base terminal. Magnitude of IC here is usually milliamp. Uh, and it is uh, significantly higher than IB, which is usually in microamp. So if you do a KCL, okay, treating the BJT as a big node, like this, you will have IE is equals to IC plus IB. Okay, KCL is switch of current law. And um, collector current okay, has two components. One is IC majority and the other is ICO minority. So IC majority is the majority current from emitter. The holes that came from the emitter to be injected into the base, diffuses across the base, enters the uh, collector base um, depletion region and swept into the collector. Sounds like a, a football commentator. So here you have an ICO minority as well, which is reverse bias leakage current between the uh, base and collector because there will still be um, electron uh, holes um, from the end side that uh, randomly enters uh, the depletion region and it is also swept uh, into the collector. Okay, So you have IC which is equal to IC majority plus ICO minority, typically milliamp compared to typically microamp or nanoamp. And usually we just um, ignore under normal applications but here it is specifically written here because sometimes when you have high temperature or some uh, tests and um, uh, some strict uh, conditions uh, of the operation you may want to consider this uh, in the testing of the devices. Okay, It may become significant under uh, certain conditions but generally in our applications we would consider IC is equals to IC majority. Alright, regions of operation. We've been mentioning this. We've only looked at active uh, mode. So active or linear region operation for BJT means that the base emitter junction is forward biased. Okay, base emitter junction is forward biased and base collector junction is reverse biased. Okay. And if it is cut off region of uh, cut off region operation, we have base emitter junction reverse biased and base collector junction is also reverse biased. Somehow in the slides it's missing here. But both are reverse biased. But for saturation region, the base emitter and base collector junction are, are both forward biased. Okay, and we will see this because what's going to happen is that we're going to take this BJT, we're going to put it in a circuit and the BJT will be biased according to how the uh, circuit functions. So it will be either inactive, cut off or saturation. So next, we will consider the BJT characteristics when connected in a particular configuration of an amplifier. But here we will focus on the BJT behavior alone before we take we actually take it and put it into DC biasing, which is going to be the next set of slides. Okay, But for this slide, we're going to have a look at the BJT behavior and its terminal characteristics. And we can connect the BJT either in common base configuration, common emitter configuration, or common collector configuration. Common base configuration. Okay, What do we mean? Common base, because we have three terminals and we can connect it in any way we, we want we, we need to connect it so if we have the BJT to be connected in an amplifier with the base being closest terminal to the ground okay like this the base is connected closer to the ground you may have a resistor here you may have resistors here resistor, but the base is the closest to the ground okay this is what we call a common base configuration so this is just an example we're not going to cover this circuit at all this is just an example of how it's going to look like okay so we have here emitter that is connected to an input signal, collector that is connected to an uh, output uh, uh, module, but the base is going to be close to the ground. Okay, And if we have this, the base is common to both input and output connections, meaning that if I look at the input voltage, it would be the voltage between um, emitter and base. Okay. If I look at the output connection, the voltage should be between collector and base. So the base is the common terminal to both input and output connections. 
To fully describe the behavior of the common base amplifiers, two sets of characteristics are required because we're going to take this BJT and we're going to put it in an amplifier. And when we put it in an amplifier, uh, in an amplifier we need to drop we need to have characteristics um, of the device and the characteristics of the circuit. And uh, the characteristic of the device uh, will be, we will now have input characteristics and output characteristics. Okay, One for driving point uh, or input parameters, we call input characteristics, which will be IEB versus VBE. And one for the output side of the output characteristics, which is IC versus VCB. Now, don't be worried if this does not make sense yet, because we will be looking at real amplifiers when we do DC biasing. But I'm just preparing you for that uh, process by uh, stating this as a statement before. And later on, when I do DC biasing, I'll be uh, calling back to this kind of uh, information. All right. So common base configuration input characteristics. This curve shows the relationship of input current IE to input voltage VBE for three output voltage VCB. So we'll have a look. Uh, we'll be looking at this kind of plots quite um, uh, a lot if we handle amplifiers. Okay. So what what does this plot say? Okay. This is a BJT connected in a common base configuration. Okay, and this is the input characteristics. The next slide after this is will be output characteristics, but this slide here is input characteristics. For the emitter base junction to turn on, if I look at this blue plot, let's just try and read what this uh, plot is saying. It must turn on approximately, say, 0 0.7 volts, okay, for IE to flow. So once VBE is 0 0.7, that means that the PN junction is now forward bias and is going to allow current flow. And that is when IE will rise. Okay, This is when uh, the majority carrier from the emitter can now be injected into the base. Okay, Under different condition of uh, uh, collected base uh, voltage as well. Because once we know that once we forward bias emitted base, we need to reverse bias uh, collected base. So under the different sets of collected base uh, fixed values, you can investigate how IE versus VBE would look like. Okay. If you handle semiconductor devices and um, those semiconductor devices are meant for amplifiers, you'll be looking at input and output characteristics quite a lot. So output characteristics. The output characteristics relates the output current IC. Okay. Now we're talking about output. And if we're talking about output, it would be IC versus VCB. Uh, the output characteristics relates the output current IC to an output voltage VCB for various levels of input current, okay, as shown. So now the output is IC and the output voltage is VCB, but here we can have several sets here. So what we're going to do is that um, in an actual uh, application, what, what uh, the investigation is done is that you're going to have the device and you will character characterize the device, maybe using... Um, a semiconductor parametric analyzer using source measurement units, some fancy equipments in the labs. Okay, then you measure, you force, you fix the um, uh, emitter current and you sweep the VCB to um, uh, investigate how IC would behave. And this is a family of curves. Okay, so meaning that let's say if I take this device and I fix IE to be 3 milliamps, for example. And I'm going to have VCB to be around 20 volts. I know that IC will be about 3 milliamps as well. So what this uh, output characteristics is also showing you is that um, the previous slide before this uh, mentioned about active region, saturation and cutoff region. So we can actually look from this, uh, look at this uh, output characteristics and we can see that there are three basic regions active. So this region is the normally one that is employed for linear or undistorted amplifiers. Okay, and there is cutoff region where both is, uh, both PN junctions are reverse biased and saturation region here uh, when both PN junctions are forward biased. So during cutoff region, your output current will be um, zero, okay, uh, almost zero. And the, during the saturation region, 
here VCE is less than VCE oh sorry VCB is less than uh, VCB set but what you can uh, look at here is that IE is um, uh, very close to IC and that um, the um, uh, horizontal sections of uh, relationship between IE and VCB they're very, uh, very good horizontal uh, lines yeah okay regions of operation what do I mean by very good horizontal line it means that it's um, the slope of this uh, line is almost zero okay so it is important to fully appreciate the statement made by these output characteristics once the transistor is on, VBE is 0 .0 0 0.7 volts. This was seen from the input characteristics. IC is approximately equals to IE. So IC is 1, IE is 1, IC is 2, IE is 2, IC is 3, IE is 3. And VCB, as I mentioned, because of the horizontal line, has negligible effect. And in the active region, in the active region, base and junction is forward bias. Collector base junction is reverse bias. I'm just repeating myself, but here with reference to the characteristics you know that uh, for if it is an MPN VBE has to be greater than 0 0.7 volts and if it's for si for if it's silicon and uh, VCB is going to be uh, greater than 0 volts to make the collector base junction reverse biased when emitter current IE um, increases above 0 here okay IC increases equally for active region and in the active region, IC is approximately equals to IE. Uh, this does not happen in the saturation region. Okay, and uh, in the cutoff region, that uh, IC would be almost zero. Okay. All right, regions of operation still. Uh, we uh, had a look at active region. So cutoff region, again, the amplifier is basically off. There is voltage, but little current. And when IE is equal to zero, IC is almost equal to zero as well, mainly from ICBO. It's just like reverse saturation current of diode. A CBO means collector to base when emitter is open. Um, it's leakage current. Okay, The base emitter junction and collector base junction are both reverse biased in the cutoff region. So VBE is less than 0 0.7, VCB is greater than 0 volts. In the saturation region, the base emitter junction and collector base junction are both forward biased. So you have VBE greater than 0 0.7 volts and VCB um, also going to be less than uh, 0 volts. So there is an exponential rise as VCB increases towards 0 volts before it enters active region. All right, now let's have a look at an example. This is just a, just a simple example to uh, help us show how to read these plots, how to read the characteristics. So you are given three characteristics here. This is an output characteristics, family of uh, curves, okay? And figure two is an input characteristics. Figure three is also an input characteristic. Figure three is a simplified version, okay? Which says that the uh, input will just turn on at 0 0.7 volts okay this looks very familiar to our diode characteristics right because diode was a pn junction as well here this is not the diode this is a bjt but because we are looking at the emitter base junction just one pn junction out of the two we expect that uh, the pn junction would behave somewhat the same okay so determine the resulting collector current Okay, if based on these figures, if IE is 3 milliamp and VCB is 10 volts, meaning that um, VCB is given to be 10 volts and IE is 3 milliamps. So let's have a look. IE is 3 milliamps, which is this one, and VCB is 10 volts. Okay, here. So the question is uh, determine IC. So IC is going to be about 3 milliamps. Second part, determine the resulting collector current IC if um, IE remains at 3 milliamp but VCB is reduced to 2 volts. Somewhere here. Okay. Okay, it would still be um, it would still be 3 milliamps because you're still in the active region operation. It's just that you're going uh, closer to the saturation region. Okay. And then next thing to read is referring to figure 1 and 2 between these two. Determine VBE if IC is 4 milliamps and VCB is 20 volts. Okay. Now we want to know what VBE is. Okay. So IC is 4 milliamps and VCB is 20 volts. What do we want here? We want to have a look at uh, IE. So if this is 
uh, v, mm, VCB 20 volts IC is 4 milliamps you're going to have IE to be about 4 milliamps and if you look at here 4 milliamps with VCB 20 volts which one here you if you expand this curve maybe you will find V um, BE to be uh, slightly bigger than 0 0.7 maybe 0 0.75 0 0.74 and if you repeat part C using figures 1 and 3 we use the um, ideal diode uh, closer to an ideal diode behavior at 4 milliamps you would have exactly 0 0.7 volts so um, this is an example from the textbook uh, Ballstat. You may want to have a look at that as well. So this is nothing complicated, just how to look at graphs. Now, still at common base configuration relating IC to IE. Now, in DC mode, the levels of IC and IE due to majority carriers are related by a quantity called alpha. So this is a common base amplification factor. And alpha is IC of IE. So ideally, we said IC was about the same as IE, right? So ideally, alpha would be equals to 1. In reality, alpha falls somewhere between 0 0.9 and 0 0.998 because we have already said that IE is almost equals to IC, so alpha is going to be really close to 1, okay? Um, the difference maybe perhaps can be accounted for with the uh, ICBO, which is the collected to base current with the E terminals open. In AC mode, you can also have an alpha, uh, where you consider the changes of IC with respect to the changes of IE and alpha DC and alpha AC are mostly very close. Okay, so the, the takeaway from this slide is, is this one here. Okay, IC is equals to alpha IE. Now let's have a look at common emitter configuration.